Live from Hartford, News 8 presents the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Day Parade. Sponsored locally by Liberty Bank, Connecticut Science Center, General Dynamics, Goya, and Tito's Handmade Vodka. Now, here are your hosts, Laura Hutchinson and Dennis House. We are celebrating the culture, the heritage, and the people of Puerto Rico here in Connecticut's capital city. Welcome to News 8 coverage of the Puerto Rican Parade. It's a beautiful day for it, isn't it? Dennis, Dennis it House. is so nice to be out here with you today, Dennis. Good morning, everyone. I'm Laura Hutchinson. And boy, after two long years of COVID shutdowns and restrictions, it is so nice to have one of the largest celebrations of Puerto Rican pride back in the capital city. And News 8 is proud to bring it to you live today. And we have a remarkable day for it, too. Absolute sunshine. It's not too hot. Lots of people are expected to join us here on Main Street and beyond. It's really going to be an amazing day, Laura. Yeah, we've been watching set up here this morning. We've already heard the music going down the street. We're located on Main Street here, right by Athenaeum Square here, and it's just a perfect day that you can feel the excitement in the air. We're in the shadow of the uh, massive Traveler's Tower, so it's <laughs> keeping us a little bit cool here right now, but let's take you to the, take some live pictures of other parts of the parade. This is the beginning of the parade. Yeah, it's getting ready to step off, yeah. actually, at the corner of Weathersfield Avenue and Warme Ave in Hartford, and it's going to then make its way past City Hall and end at a festival at Bushnell Park. Yeah, and you're looking at downtown right now. This is Main Street, and people are already starting to come up. They're bringing their chairs and things like that and umbrellas to just have a great day out here and celebrate uh, your Puerto Rican coverage heritage. This is, by the way, the biggest Puerto Rican parade in all of Connecticut, mm -hmm. we are told by the organizers, some 3,000 people are expected to march today. Yeah, and people may not realize this, but, you know, it's typically held in June, usually opens the season of Puerto Rican parades and festivals throughout New England. This year, we have an August slot in the calendar, and you're going to see everything, school groups, bands, elected officials, dancers, of course, people from all over the state lining the street, and it is about to step off, but before we do, we want to introduce you to a very special guest this morning. Yes, Emilcar Hernandez is the Board of Directors for the Parade Committee, and we've had the chance to chat with them before we came on the air live, and he was giving us some insight into what's happening today. So, first of all, Amakar, thank you so much for being with us here today, and we love your shirt. Yeah, we do. <laughs> thank T you. Tell us what this day means to you. It's so nice to have this back. Uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, we are excited. Um, uh, we, we can't wait to just get this started. Uh, a lot of people are just waiting for, for this day. Um, and we are definitely going to, to have a fun, we have a, we're going to have a great time today. Yeah, there's a lot of planning that goes into a parade like this, uh, but it really is about kicking back and letting loose and celebrating too. Talk to us a little bit about the planning. Yeah, so we, we took about six, seven months of planning. Uh, you know, the last three months have been like, you know, all in. Uh, it definitely is a lot of planning, uh, not only getting the sponsors or getting the, the participants, uh, but all, all the logistics. Uh, you know, we're chilling down in Main Street in Hartford. So imagine, you know, uh, what kind of work it takes. Amalcar, you were saying the other day to me that uh, this is one of the most Puerto Rican cities in the nation, Hartford yeah, is. Yeah, at some point, uh, we were in the top 10 cities, you know, with the most Puerto Ricans in the nation. Uh, you know, now Florida's taking over, you know, many of their cities, but uh, Hartford has a lot of Puerto Ricans here, and, and we have expanded in the greater Hartford area. That's why we are called the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade. Right. Well, we're very excited to have you with us here today. We'll be tapping into your expertise throughout the next hour. And the, let's take you to the flag raising now. We want to show you this was a very special occasion that took place earlier today at the City Hall. Uh, the Puerto Rican flag was is now hanging outside the state capitol. And uh, there yeah. have been a few um, incarnations of this flag, but this has been the official flag since, what, 1982, right? 1962. Yeah, uh, and on Thursday, yeah. they did the official celebration, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, uh, oh, since Thursday, 19, that's right. Since 1952, uh, this has been the official flag, uh, and on Thursday, we had the ceremony at the City Hall and also at the State Capitol. All right, and we, of course, have crews for you. We are just getting started this morning. Crews all along the parade route, spectators and marchers. But we want to get you started this morning with News 8's Sarah Cody, who is out there uh, getting ready for the parade to kick off. Hi, Sarah. What are you seeing? Hey guys, after a pandemic break, we are so excited to be back here on the streets of Hartford. I'm here with some people who lined the streets early. We're all super excited, right? Yes? Yeah! 
The energy is high. We are all ready for this great event. Now, you know how great this parade is, but maybe you don't know how hard organizers work all week leading up to it. Let's take you out to an event on Monday that's really worthwhile. After two years, I'm excited to have the full parade and festival. The Puerto Rican Parade and Festival following in Bushnell Park will be back invigorating the streets of Hartford. CICD President Sammy Vega says it will be bigger than ever. We have confirmed so far over 20 floats. You know? So it's going to be a colorful music, culture. Uh, I'm excited. During the pandemic, parade organizers worked hard to keep the spirit going with a rolling caravan and multiple vaccine clinics. But this return to a new normal feels good. We are full of joy and gratitude that we get to come back to the community with the parade and the festival this year. It's amazing. This annual event is a precursor to all the fun that's coming up. This is Goya Cares. The company has donated more than 5,000 pounds of food to Catholic charities, and that's affecting 500 local families. Food is a gift from God, and it must be given with love. And that's what Goya gives, love because they care. Goya cares. What we try to do is we try to give them a meal. So there'll be rice, there'll be meat, meat uh, there'll be beans uh, and, and vegetables and a drink, something that they can use to make a full, complete meal. Rafael Toro of Goya Foods says the international company takes great pride in servicing all people here in the United States. When people come from another country, they're looking for their food, and we're very proud that whether they're Puerto Rican, Dominican, Mexicans, Colombians, that they can always go to that Goya section and find the product that makes them think of home. And for the Hartford community, this parade feels like home, a celebration of pride, family, and culture. It takes a lot of uh, efforts from the volunteers and the board members and, you know, organizations, but at the end of the day, it's really worth it. Now, folks I've been talking to say that they're ready for those floats, they're ready for the music, they're ready for the dancing. I've got my dancing shoes on. Dennis and Laura, I hope you do too. Sending it back to you. Oh, we're ready for the music. We are ready, <laughs> and we have a prime seat here on Main Street overlooking downtown near the Traveler's Tower. The old state house is not too far away, and of course the Wadsworth Athenaeum. So we're pretty excited about today's event. Yes, events. looking forward to it. We are just getting started. We're going to take a quick break, and your coverage of the Hartford Puerto Rican Parade will continue right here on News 8 after these messages. I can't hear you super well, but I can hear you. Yep.
Welcome back. We are bringing you live coverage on News 8 of the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade. So excited, giving you a live look along the parade route. And we are waiting for this parade to step off in just a little bit. It will march from the corner of Weathersfield Ave and Wawarme Avenue in Hartford. It's going to go past City Hall and then end with a big festival at Bushnell Park. Really, thousands are expected here today. Let's take you live to the beginning of that parade, the beginning of the parade route, where News 8's Ashley Baylor is camped out. Ashley, what are you seeing so far? Guys, we are moving here. The parade has started, so it's making its way towards you. And I tell you, it feels like you're in Puerto Rico today. We have sunshine, it's warm, it's humid, but everybody is in phenomenal spirits. Great pride out here. And I'm walking here with Hector Rivera. He is the CEO of OPP, our piece of the pie. Hector, thank you so much. You are the CEO of this organization. Yes, I am. Uh, two years around. Two years. Yeah. Okay, so what does your organization do? Well, we work with young people, 14 to 24, helping them with youth development, workforce development, and education. So, you know, it's great that this cultural event is back in Hartford. OPP is part of the cultural fabric of this community, and we're out here supporting and getting our word out. And this is your first year doing this parade, yes, yes, so you yes. really want to get the word out to folks along the parade absolutely, route. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we got we got some treats, we got some literature to give out, and we got our young people with us and our staff. I know, you have a bunch of volunteers up there. Yeah. So how many volunteers do you have for this organization? Twelve. We got 12 staff here today, and we got 35 young people with us today. Awesome. And how many overall? About 1,000, right? We serve about 1,000 yearly. Yeah. And that's really great. So I really hope you guys can get the word out. It's a great organization, and you guys are following the great Goya float right here. They do great work as well for the community, so I think that's the best part. We have groups out here, here to support the community in Hartford, get the word out about all of the great things, and of course, the Puerto Rican pride. I hope if you're not out here, you can come out here, because it's gonna be such a spectacular parade, and look how long it goes. It goes for quite a ways. We're going to enjoy it. Back to you, Dennis and Laura. Oh, All I right. can't wait for that to make it our way. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of fun. You know, I had the chance to visit our piece of the pie a couple years ago. Really a great organization. They do so much work. And our commentator, who's going to be joining us later in the program, Amalcar Hernandez, also works there. So we want to point that out. Oh, so great. you're looking live at the view of downtown Hartford from the WTNH News 8 Hartford Newsroom. The parade will be snaking through there in just a few minutes. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You are watching live coverage on News 8 on this Sunday morning, live from Connecticut's capital city of the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade. We thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Dennis House alongside Laura Hutchinson. Yeah. The parade is almost near our location, getting yeah. closer by the minute. You can feel the energy, and we're taking a look at the families gathered, the kids so excited. And as this parade makes its big return this year, the celebration is dedicated to the family of Roberto Clemente, who became the first Latin American player inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1973. He was one of the greatest baseball players of all time. He played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He was killed in a plane crash on New Year's Eve 1972 at the age of 38. He was flying to Nicaragua on a humanitarian mission there. And I had the great opportunity to meet his son yesterday at Dunkin' Donuts Park for Ro Roberto Clemente Day. And here's a portion of that interview. Bo Ortiz is from Hartford, Connecticut, and he, he spent eight years playing with the Orioles. Luis Clemente was only six years old when his father was killed almost 50 years ago. Today, he brings the Roberto Clemente Foundation to Connecticut to teach kids about the game his father loved. This is what our mom taught us to continue, my, my father's legacy, the Clemente legacy. So we've learned, you know, that this is how you continue that legacy, is teaching, talking to the kids, uh, letting them know what life is about, not just baseball, baseball as a platform to get his message across. It's those lessons, Clemente says, are the most important. Who was Roberto Clemente? He was a great baseball player, one of the greatest of all time. He's a famous baseball player. He played for the Pirates. He wears number 21. Played right field, won about 12 Golden Gloves. He was a good baseball player, and he used to help people. Won two World Series, played for the Pirates. You know a lot about him. Kind of, yeah. I feel like we're like now with him. And they are his father's enduring legacy. Being here in Hartford, your dad's number is on the wall here. This is so What special. does that mean to you? It is so special to be in Dunkin' Donut Ballpark. You know, other than PNC in Pittsburgh, this is the only other ballpark that has retired number 21. Only so, in the whole country? That's it, you know? And, and you have number 21, and next you have 42. So that's what everyone would like to see, right? But here you have it. So the number one thing of today is what? At Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford. Have fun. I'm Dennis House, We're News 8. Last night's game was a sellout dedicated to Roberto Clemente. News aide Talisa Taglia was one of the many thousand to get a lucky ticket. And uh, our commentator with us here today, Amalcar Hernandez, also has 21 on his shirt, correct? Yes, yes, In sir. the back? Yes, yes. Sir. yep. So. It's a big moment for the family today. It is, it is. It is. I've spent the last two days with them, and they are amazing people. They definitely embrace the same values that we know Roberto Clemente, you know, embraced. Oh, well, it's going to be great to see the family and the kids who are so excited to be a part of it, too. It's going to be a great event. Our coverage of the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade continues after these messages. We'll be right back.
Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade in Hartford. We are proud to be bringing you live coverage of this special event here on this Sunday morning. I'm Laura Hutchinson alongside Dennis House, and we have a friend, our Emil Carr Hernandez, here with us on the board of directors for the parade committee. As we we know the parade has started, we were just checking in with Ashley Baylor, who gave us a little peek. We're waiting for it here to come down Main Street, um, and as we wait for the parade to reach us, talk to us about what's different this year. There was a pause on this parade, and now it's back, bigger than ever. Uh, talk to us about what we're going to be seeing today. Yeah, so the last parade was in 2019, so we had a, we had a pause there due to COVID. Uh, but this year we're coming back, and we're coming back big. Uh, we have about 60 groups. Uh, you're going to see many of them uh, coming through in a little bit. Uh, this year we wanted to showcase our local um, uh, groups, our local organizations. So you're going to see them in between uh, honorees, in between uh, major sponsors. So we kind of spread it out because we definitely want to make sure that people get to see our local communities. Uh, so you will see a lot of that. Uh, you're going to see dancing, you're going to see drumming, uh, you're going to see a lot of excitement. Yeah, a lot of opportunities too with the festival at Bushnell Park too. I know that there's uh, going to be job opportunities there, um, a vaccination clinic happening. Um, um, so this really is uh, not only a celebration, but real, really an outreach and, and helping people better their lives in some way. Yeah, definitely. You're going to have at least General Dynamics Electric Boat. They're going to have a, a, a tent uh, at the festival. Uh, they are looking between 3,000 to 4,000 uh, people. Wow. They have a lot of openings. Uh, uh, no experience necessary. So if you're looking for a job, head to Bushnell Park. They're going to have a tent there with job opportunities. Uh, Department of Public Health, City of Hartford, they're going to have a vaccine drive. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. Yeah, and my guess is you'll be able to get a good bite to eat. <laughs> I think there will be no uh, shortage of food. <laughs> lots, lots of good food there today. Amakar, it's a Sunday morning, so I'm going to ask you a political question because I talked to a lot of people of Puerto Rican heritage in the area and statehood is on their mind because it's a big issue this year. What's the latest? It, it is. It's been an issue for many years. Um, you know, you have um, our communities kind of split. You know, uh, many want the statehood, uh, some don't. Uh, but this is an issue that doesn't seem to, that it's going to ever be solved. Um, so, you know, the ball is on the Congress hands, and, and we'll, see, we'll see what they say. What do you say we right. head out along the parade yeah. route now? That's Fine News yeah. 8's Sarah Cody. She's alongside the parade route right on Main Street with a look at some of the festivities that are already beginning and the people who are already turned out for this great event. Hi, Sarah. Hey guys, we're having so much fun making friends here along the parade route. I want to introduce you to Nancy. Hey again, Nancy, how are you? Oh, wow. Tell me exactly what brought you out here to the parade route on this Sunday. Well, first of all, it's been a, a long coming parade, right? right? So yes. therefore, I'm just loving just being here with family, friends, and just being united. This is what we represent, unity. Tell me about your love of being Puerto Rican. What is it all about? It's about family. It's about spirit the culture itself yeah. you know just uh we're loving people yeah. you know we love being united with family and and it's just amazing uh being puerto rican and i'm proud to be a puerto rican that's awesome nancy thank you, thank you. a man saw me dancing and he asked me are you puerto rican i said no i'm irish and he said everyone's puerto rican today yes. so that's what we're saying right Everyone's Puerto Rican today in Hartford, guys. We're waiting for the floats. We're waiting for all the fun. We'll send it back to you. Yeah, it's thanks, Sarah. It's a beautiful day to come out here and see the parade. It really yes, is. You can get is. parking. There's, it's a beautiful. It's not too hot. No, it's not too hot. And, you know, there's just so much excitement that, uh, oh, and we're seeing uh, this motorcade coming down the street here. It looks like this uh, could be approaching us soon, Dennis. I can see it behind us. This is the beginning of the parade, the Hartford Police Motorcycles. I think we're going to take a quick timeout, quick commercial timeout, and we'll be back with... Nope, we're going to stay with this, actually, which is good because they're they're approaching us. So this is the Hartford Police Entourage, Yeah, Laura. and the color guard as well that starts the parade off. Very exciting moment, you know, because with the lights flashing, the kids are seeing this. We can turn around and see it right here behind us, uh, marking the beginning of this exciting day. And one of the nice things about the Hartford Police Department, I, I can tell you from my own experience, that, that there are several people, several officers of Puerto Rican heritage on the force, and so they are very proud of their heritage and uh, really helps with community policing and things like that. Right, and of course we want to thank Harford Police as well. A number of officers posted along the route, keeping the roads closed off, uh, keeping everyone safe. They're located at all of the intersections, uh, so they're of course doing great work today yep. while also uh, showing their pride and showcasing in the parade itself. And so if you are coming to the parade or trying to figure out where this is taking place, it began in the south then they're uh, not too far from Colt Park at Wethersfield and Mawarmi. It will go down Main Street. 
It'll pass City Hall. It'll pass uh, so many great companies in our state, the travelers among them. Uh, Laz Parking is another one they'll be passing. And of course, some beautiful buildings along the way, City Hall and the library and what else? Wadsworth Athenaeum, the old state house. It's gonna work its way down Gold Street to Bushnell Park. And that's where the festival will get underway. That's right. And Amilcar, too, we're going to uh, take a break in a little bit. You must be getting exciting seeing this coming down the street. Oh, man, I can feel it. I got goosebumps now. <laughs> <laughs> so All right, we're going to let this get a little closer to us. We'll take a short break. You are watching the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade live on News 8. Don't go anywhere. Hi everyone, welcome back. You are watching the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade, giving you a live look down Main Street here as the parade approaches. The excitement is building. I'm Laura Hutchinson alongside Dennis House. And Dennis, wearing a shirt carefully selected this morning too. Yes, so this is uh, a traditional Latin American shirt. You'll see them on Puerto Rican men throughout uh, throughout the world, actually. And I got a recommendation from our good friend, Amalcar Hernandez. Can you explain it's exactly approved. the significance of this? So, so uh, the guayabera uh, was brought by the Spanish colonizers when, in yeah. the 19th century to Cuba, Puerto Rico, uh, for farmers to use. Because the way that the material that, it, that it's made out of, it's really good for to work under the sun. Uh, and then it just stayed with us. It's just, you know, it's a part of our heritage. Yeah, there's a couple of great stores on Park Street that sell the, this type of attire and you can also I was in a hurry so I got this on Amazon it came in 24 hours to my door so that was kind of <laughs> nice so uh, you're looking live at the Hartford Police Motorcycle Squad at least some of the motorcycles that yep, protect yep. and serve your capital city they are the first entrant in the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Day yep. Parade on this uh, Sunday Hartford Police Color Guard there and right behind the American Medical Response Team, AMR, nation's leading medical transportation company founded in 1977. And while they may be large, they of course uh, take their heart and ability to serve individual communities, including the city of Hartford. It's proud to be local here, working hand in hand with several organizations, uh, keeping everyone safe. Yeah, this is taking place. Uh, that view of the police officers was right in front of Hartford City Hall. It seems to have uh, stopped for just a second there's no marching going on right now uh, but they will be approaching our position here which is right in front of the Wadsworth Athenaeum and the Travelers Tower right in the heart of downtown Hartford and you know Laura everywhere you look you see those uh, beautiful Puerto Rican flags and I know that you and I talked about you know what do you wear for parade coverage and you picked red right. and I picked blue and uh, Amalcar said that's perfect because it 
because it reflects the, uh, the, the the beautiful Puerto Rican flag, which was created back in 1952. Right, and as we uh, watch this parade move forward, why don't we get a peek inside the parade route? We have meteorologist Ashley Baylor, who is live in the thick of it all right now. Ashley, take us there. What are you seeing? Oh my gosh, it is so fun out here. Every single float that goes by, everybody is dancing. I think to have this back after two years just puts everybody in a great mood. I think the weather is putting everybody in a great mood. Come with me, Ron. I've been watching this woman over here. I've been watching you guys dancing. We're live right now. I'm so happy. You're so happy? Yeah, I love it. Puerto Rico is day 51. The, the, the beach is for Puerto Rico, not for... A, the beach is done. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I want a 51 state. Oh, hey. 51 state, Puerto Rico. All right. Yeah, yeah. You feel the same way? Yeah. Yes. Rico. We're so happy we have Puerto Rico up here. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. <laughs> and I see you guys dancing down here. Are you guys enjoying the day? Oh, Hell yeah. 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 Viva Puerto Rico. <laughs> All right, I think, honestly, just a little bit, we have Charter Oak Health coming by here. All sorts of different organizations with the Puerto Rican pride coming by. I mean, everybody is just big smiles today. Who's behind them? We've got LALCC right behind them, a part of Central Connecticut State. And they're going to be going back to school soon, so they're probably really enjoying this day where they still have some time off. But every float that comes by that is blasting music, everybody is dancing. So you know what? I don't even think you have to be from Puerto Rico or of Puerto Rican descent to really come down here and have a great time and just enjoy yourselves. Roberto Clemente Dancers from Boston, Massachusetts. Hey, guys. Oh, we have these beautiful dancers. Oh, I love them. Wow, that, that does look like a lot of fun. Thanks, Ashley. And right behind us, Laura, we can see that the AMR ambulance crews are just passing by. And there you see the Hartford Police units as well, the officers who are now here. Um, Boy, this is what the kids really look forward to. Seeing the lights, the sirens. You can see the Latin American firefighters there with the engines. Uh, Latinos and Latinas in the Hartford Fire Department created in 1982 to assist fellow Latinos advance within the ranks too of the department as well as give back to the community primarily in Hartford. So very excited to see them here today. Absolutely. You know, the Hartford Fire Department, they respond to so many calls every day. There are stations throughout the capital city. And so we'll give them a big shout out. A big thank you too for protecting and serving the capital city. All right, let's go to News 8, Sarah Cody, who is with Governor Lamont. Hi, Sarah. We don't have her. We don't have her. Okay, we're going to be getting here. This is what happens at a live event. Sometimes uh, the sure. parade is... She's getting prepped with the governor Absolutely. right now. But in the meantime, taking a look at the Latin American firefighters here. And as we turn around, we can see the crowd kind of starting to inch their way into the street. They're so excited that the parade is finally here. You hear the sirens. You can see the flashing lights. Uh, and there's just a warm welcome here on Main Street. Absolutely. And it's, it's, a, it's a good sized crowd. Many of them are already at uh, Bushnell Park where the parade ends and the festival begins. Some people camped out early to get a good seat there. So we are sort of at the tail end of the parade where we are situated right here. But uh, there you see some firefighters as well. Some kids walking in there with the fire crew as well. What an exciting day for them to be a part of this. Oh, and you can't beat seeing the engines go down. You know that this is uh, an exciting moment for the families. You know, in, 
You know, Laura, it is such a family event, too. You see a lot of the souvenirs being sold out here, Puerto Rican flags and Puerto Rican merchandise, and just so many people out here taking pictures and doing Facebook Lives and really having a lot of fun. If you are taking pictures today of the parade, please tag us on social media at WTNH. We'd love to see your pictures from today's event. Yes, we'd love to see. And as the uh, firefighters move through, let's see, taking a look at uh, some of the CICD scholars here you're taking a look at. Yep, they are showing up right after the firefighters. Sure, that's the CICD banner. And you have Scotter, the scholars. That stands for the Connecticut Institute for Community Development. And so after this, uh, we're also going to see the, Rob the Roberto Clemente Committee which will be coming through as well with Luis Clemente. That is the uh, gentleman we interviewed. Oh, look who's coming along right here. All right, and We've, now we have Miss Puerto Rico approaching. And I have to tell you, I spoke with Destiny Garcia and what a wonderful young lady she is. She has her descendants from Puerto Rico. She is so proud to be here in Connecticut. Uh, she still goes back to visit Puerto Rico. She tries to go at least once a year. Um, but boy, is this a, a really uh, wonderful young lady with bright aspirations. Looking great. <laughs> OK, let's go to Sarah Cody now Stand with by, Governor guys. Lamont. Hi, Sarah. Hey, guys, we're here with the whole gang. Governor, the party is back. The party is right here in Hartford, Puerto Rican Day Parade. Don't miss it. This is amazing. A great day for Puerto Rico, a great day for Connecticut. Senator, this is exciting, and we have a surprise guest. We welcome... Miguel Cardona. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, we are very happy to welcome the chief education official for the United States of America as we begin the school year with the spirit and energy and vitality of Puerto Rico. That's right, that's right. Always happy to be back. This is home. Connecticut is home. What an exciting uh, mood here. Everyone's excited celebrating Puerto Rican culture here in Connecticut. Sense of community is back. Our schools are opening up. Our kids are going back. We're excited. A lot to celebrate. Lots to celebrate. Love our state. Diversity today. Everyone's Puerto Rican. That's what I keep hearing, right? Everybody's yelling out WEPA today. Regardless if you're in Hartford or not, yeah. WEPA is the word of the day. <laughs> Today's a party. Viva. Viva Puerto Rico. All right. Nice to see you guys. Boricua. 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 Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have fun the rest of the parade. All right. So great to see Secretary Cardona here. Also, he with the governor, we see Senator Blumenthal, Lieutenant Governor Bysiewicz, and Attorney General right. Tong as well. We saw well. the parade queen go by, and I know that there were a few uh, young yeah, ladies. So, so we had we had the uh, the Miss Teen, Destiny Garcia. We also had the Miss Preteen, uh, Michelle Sanchez, and then the Miss Little Miss, Mariah Mendez. But we also saw some of the runner-ups there as well, because they are all queens. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and it wasn't a beauty pageant. It was a cultural pageant. Sure. So I want to make sure that, that we understand... Right, and they attend galas and do a lot of good work throughout the year. Important to mention that. All right, next up, we're going to be seeing General Dynamics is coming up uh, here. Yeah, Electric Boat, uh, one of the sponsors of the parade today. They're, as you know, Dennis, the primary builder of submarines in the U.S. Navy for more than 100 years. And, you know, what's big with them today, too, is that they're looking to hire around 3,000 people. Which is great. And I know, you know, we show General Dynamics and Electric Boat every day on the newscast. You can see them from the News 8 New London camera sure. in Groton every single day on the Thames River, and they do contribute so much to our society here. They do. I got to speak with Joe Garcia, too, who said they're hiring for their Groton and New London locations. You can actually go to Bushnell with your resume and apply today. So we have a good time, grab food, and maybe get a job. Uh, and if you can make and, and it, ebcareers.com, ebcareers.com, uh, to get a job with the uh, electric boat. So right behind us we have, as we can see, there's Secretary Cardona, uh, Senator Blumenthal giving us a big wave, and Lieutenant Governor Bysiewicz is coming up as well. Uh, really a nice, nice to see Secretary Cardona. You know, he's yeah. uh, that was that was a big surprise. You know, we talked last night, and yeah. he was like, oh, "I'll try to make it." He's here. <laughs> he made it. I think he knew. I think he knew. They, but you know, they wanted to surprise us, which sure. is great. It was and a really nice surprise. The so. electric boat float here, boy, that is really decorated full of pride, and I know that this was a surprise for Joe Garcia, who was excited to be seeing it, too. Uh, and they're, uh, you know, just he, having a great time out here today. Yeah. What yeah, a day. He, uh, yeah, here, here we have the host of the festival, Delia Anunez and Tricky Tricky. And oh, they're the host of the festival at Bushnell Park. That's right. So yeah. Delia Nunez and uh, Tricky Tricky and... Yeah. And the Paso Fino horses as yeah. well, meaning fine step or delicate walk. You've described the gait 
or walk of these horses gliding forward into instead of a rocking or bumping movement like saddle horses may may uh, may move. This is a national treasure, Laura, in Puerto Rico. They just love to see these horses. They participated in many Puerto Rican parades and other cultural activities, and they, they really focus on maintaining, uh, helping maintain some of the Puerto Rican traditions that people are so proud of. And they go pretty fast, actually. Beautiful. Look at yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I, watching them, and it really is they're amazing. They're beautiful to see. animals, aren't they? That's how Dennis hustles into work in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I go by horseback. <laughs> quick feet, quick feet, quick yeah. feet. <laughs> they are remarkable. Um, but, you know, just. Um, and there are more of them in the horse trailer. Oh, and this oh, is. Yes, so now. Going. This is, uh, these are the guests of honor today. They are the family of Roberto Clemente, number 21, legend, one of the best baseball players of all time. If you have his baseball card, it's worth a lot of money, right? From the 60s and the 70s. I, I think he started playing in the 50s, right? Late wearing 50s, his shirt I today. Um, yes, 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 sir. yes, I am. He's wearing his shirt, and you know he was um, really known for his humanitarian work, and that and that's what's so important. And the message to young kids who who are playing now um, that it's not just the game; it's the humanitarian work. And wearing his name is really a source of pride. So what you're seeing is the uh, Luis Clemente with the flag and the stripe. That's Luis Clemente. That's the second son of Roberto Clemente. His wife Olga. Uh, you got grandkids there, Roberto Enrique, Luis Clemente Jr., Diana, the wife. Uh, is that the whole family from Puerto Rico is here? Yeah, because his son was only about six when his dad died. Yes, he was, in fact, so Luis is in the striped shirt. Hey, Luis! How are you? He uh, was telling me he was six years old when his father was killed in a plane crash, flying to Nicaragua on a humanitarian mission. There was a natural disaster there, I believe. He was on his way to help yeah, out. Earthquake, um, he was delivering supplies for the, after the earthquake. That's right, that's right. And uh, he, uh, they created the Roberto Clemente Foundation in his name after that. And it, it helps bring just the joy of baseball to kids all over the nation, but also to teach them about Roberto Clemente. Last night was Roberto Clemente night, Clemente night at the Yardcote Stadium. It was a sellout crowd. and Yeah, you were there, and it was a good time. Yeah, yeah. See, see. Here we go, and this is uh, the governor's re-election campaign coming through. Um, and we, we heard him earlier with um, Sarah Cody. He's marching with uh, members of his team yep. and of course, uh, the Lieutenant Governor Susan Bob, Bice Bob Stefanowski will be challenging He's him coming as up well. as well. Right. Um, rematch of the campaign in 2018. So this is the Ned for CT group here. Uh, of course, the governor, a uh, longtime supporter of Puerto Rican community in the state. Amokar, what do you know about the hat the governor's wearing? Uh, we can see that again. Yes, that is definitely a typical hat. You normally see it uh, when you're riding horses. Uh, so definitely a typical hat. It looks good on him. All right, we have a big sponsor with us here. This is Goya Foods, uh, teaming up to do a lot of good leading up to this parade. They yes. donated about 5,000 pounds of food uh, to kick off the, the parade, benefiting 500 families. The Goya Cares Global Initiative um, is it really, it's a campaign, and this is important, a campaign to eliminate child trafficking. Today, you're seeing only kids on the floor. Oh, the governor's coming to say hi to us. Hey, governor. Nice to see you. Hello, governor. How are you? Nice to see you. Hello, governor. Um, hey. Now, this boy... Live TV for you back there. Live TV. We're, we're on live television. Just want to mention Having here, a lot of fun. Uh, there's children on the Goya Cares float um, because they're... Really oh, we got uh, William together. Tong, our attorney general, stopping by at the News 8 booth and Lieutenant Governor. Hi, Lieutenant Governor. Nice to see you. Here we go. Goya Cares. The goal uh, here today to eliminate child trafficking, uh, really bringing the focus to kids today and, and the important mission there. Yeah, right ahead of Goya, you see uh, Grand Marshal, uh, State Representative uh, Edwin Vargas. He's our Grand Marshal today. A familiar face at the state capitol and also around the city of Hartford for quite some time. State Representative Vargas, uh, uh, he's ubiquitous at events across the capital city and the state, particularly when it's uh, in, in regards to some Puerto Rican uh, cultural events. Boy, you can hear the music. It has really picked up here along Main Street. How much fun is this? You can see people out taking pictures. Let's listen.
So now we're watching our piece of the pie. That's the organization we talked about earlier. And Amakar, you work there. Tell us about it. Yeah, I've been there for 16 years. Uh, great organization, youth development, uh, academics, workforce. Uh, I mean, you can see the excitement. Uh, we have the program Hard for Youth Service Corps. Uh, those are 35 youth you see uh, right there with the Orange Church. Uh, great, great organization. The music you're hearing was the Goya float moving through. And the art piece of the pie following that you're taking a look at here, enjoying the music, waving their flags, having a great time. And that is uh, State Representative Minnie Gonzalez. She is uh, the godmother of this year's parade. She's a fixture in the Frog Hollow neighborhood, in Parkville neighborhood of Hartford, where she uh, where she's based and represents. She's served Hartford since 1997. And next up, Laura, we have Estrellas Tropicales. Sure, this is a, uh, a baton, pom-pom flag dance group founded in 1973, teaching the art of dance using batons, pom-poms, flags. Really is quite a sight to see. Looking forward to, to seeing them as they move through. Yeah, their main purpose, you know, they, they do so many positive things across the capital city. Watching some of the uh, the crowd work their way in there. Here we go. Astrea Tropicalis, by the way, is, um, they are celebrating 50 years this year, I believe. Yeah, and they really, uh, you know, learning. Yeah, 50th anniversary. I love this music, don't you, Laura? I do. Let's listen. It's hard to sit still. Cadrelli, Keith Coons, Tina Dutel, Eva Zamaris, Ryan Munn. Ken Pierce, Ken, Ken, I see there. Jane Chalk, John Pearson. What a great crew. We know them. We do know them. We really do have a, a great team. And you're taking a look here from the News 8 Mobile Weather Lab, too, uh, rolling down the streets to give you a different perspective of the fun. We mentioned Sam Cantor, but I believe he's driving. Yes, he's usually in our mobile weather lab. Yeah, so the, you can't, you, but but if you look through, but there's uh Might be a Sam sighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is a Sam sighting. What a great day. Big smiles. Oh, it looks like... Oh, Rich Coppola. Oh, Rich That's Rich Coppola there. John Pearson John Pearson. There. there they are. Hi, guys. Keith Koontz, Ken Pierce. Mike Mascadrelli there, Tina Detell. Stopping to take a picture. I'll take a picture of all of them too. There we go. Join in in the fun. What a great day to be out here. Ryan Munn out there as well. Okay. You got a nice crew out there today, there which is great. The and there's our boss, Chuck Carter, giving Sam some instructions. Make sure you don't <laughs> speed, stay in your lane. I do whatever he says. <laughs> <laughs> there's Sam. So next up, who do we have? Let's it see. Looks like we're coming up on the Team Kasi here. Yeah. Also want to give a big shout out to Liberty Bank and the Connecticut Science Center. Team Kasi. Uh, so it's been three years uh, since she passed away. Tell, um, us, tell us again, your mic just came up. Team Kasi Forever, go ahead. Yeah, Team Kasi Forever, it's the, uh, uh, the tag that we use for Cassandra, uh, who passed away three years ago. She was the daughter of Sam, uh, Sammy Vega, our president for CICD Puerto Rican Parade. Uh, she passed away uh, due to cancer. 
So we have basically a group representing uh, Cassandra. Wow. And what a beautiful representative it, representation it absolutely. is Absolutely. Those here. dresses are absolutely amazing, aren't they? It is. And the outfits See, that they are wearing. this is what people are here for. The music, the dancing, the outfits, the flag. I, I've always been impressed by just just the the love, the passion that the Puerto Ricans of Connecticut have for their... And I think we're seeing confetti flying in the, the air now there, too. For their heritage. Confetti flying around. There's some great restaurants. I, you know, um, uh, Aquí Me Quedo, I love that little place, yes, and uh, yes. at Frog Hollow, they have some great Puerto Rican specialties if you ever stop oh, yeah. in. Oh, yeah, you mentioned the source of pride. I mean, that it runs deep in Hartford yeah. and the surrounding area. And Aquí Me Quedo has been here for decades. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we also have a Tillo restaurant in East Hartford. Okay. Uh, and then we have um, Criollissimo in New Britain. Those are sponsors. Those are uh, folks that support our community as well. Okay. Excellent. All right, so uh, coming up next, should be momentarily, you should be seeing Centro de Jubilo El Olam. Yeah, it looks like we've taken a pause here to watch yeah. the dancers for a little bit, which is uh, quite the entertainment. today, Tito's Vodka, supporting the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade. And uh, I can tell you, I spoke with Frank Latora with Tito's, who is so excited to be a part of this today. Uh, they have the Love Tito's program, which you may not realize. They're, they're, they're the philanthropic arm of the company. Really, about 80% of what they do is giving back in the community. And yep. a lot of that, they're giving to about 300 charities in Connecticut this year. And they, on that float, they have a confetti cannon. That's hopefully, the confetti we're seeing. Hopefully we'll see. Oh, yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> it's kind of, it, it doesn't make the big noise, but it does shoot out the confetti. And, uh... They'll go to Bushnell Park, and they're going to be serving some signature drinks down there. Tito's Lemonade, Paloma. Yeah, Tito's, Tito's, Tito's is definitely a big, uh, a big supporter. They don't only support the parade, but they also support our banquet. They support many of our events, so shout out to yeah. Tito's.
A lot of spirit, good weather, couldn't be better. We're so happy to be here. I've seen you really talking to people. You're really connecting with them, trying to get to know the community. You know, I love the kids. I give them a little Bob sticker. I'm not sure whether they know who I am or not, but they love the sticker. Everyone loves stickers. Yeah. Laura, are you having a good time? We are having a blast. Everybody out here is just so excited. This is the most fun parade. We're really having a ball. It means a lot that it's back. Yeah, it does. It's great to have it back. Amazing yeah. crowd today. It's an awesome, awesome. crowd. It's yeah. great Thank to you be for, in Connecticut. Thank You're you for right. talking with us. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank okay. you. Yeah, take care. Sending it, sending it back to you guys. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. On behalf of all of us here at News 8, Laura Hutchinson, Amalcar Hernandez, and me, we are going to be throwing things over to WTNH.com. Yes, we're going to continue streaming live for you so you can continue to watch this. But this will close out our on-air coverage here. Thanks for watching live on News 8. We'll see you on WTNH.com for the completion of the parade. And the News 8 app. Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade live on WTNH.com. Hopefully, you've been watching on air. We want to continue bringing live coverage of the parade as it's uh, still going on down Main Street here. Beautiful day, lots of excitement, music, dancing, and we are happy you're joining us for it. Yes, I'm Dennis House alongside Laura Hutchinson from Good Morning Connecticut, and we are here on this Sunday morning in downtown. Well, it's now Sunday afternoon. Yeah. In downtown Hartford as the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade comes from the south end to downtown and behind us right now you see Los Chivos that is one of the names that the yard goats uses uh, <laughs> the, to celebrate Latino heritage and we're sitting here uh, today with Amilcar Hernandez too, joining us uh, helping out today thank you so much again for your time oh, cool. and I know uh, on air we didn't get to talk about it but we did see the godfather of the parade for uh, organization as well yeah News 8 yeah. was uh, there for the celebration of the Puerto Rican pride on the green and uh, that's on our website right now WTNH.com we want to check that out after you watch this program of course next up we have Juniper Home Care is coming up Juniper Home Care, one of Connecticut's top home care agencies and a leading expert in helping seniors since 1998. Really uh, created by a great family, the Brawl family, located on New Britain Avenue in West Hartford. Aside from home care, they also have adult daycare centers, provide meals on wheels, and adult family caregiving as well. Yeah, I recognize that van moving yep. through Juniper. Yeah, they have those bright purple and green yep. colors. I love the authentic wear, the outfits that we're seeing today. We mentioned earlier the dancers, uh, just so many people moving through and giving us just a real cultural experience. Yeah, months of planning goes into this event. We couldn't have asked for a better day for no, this. No, it really. You know, there's really a nice is. breeze keeping things cool. Yep. And uh, it's not completely sunny. Yeah, and it, it's usually in June this is held, usually. Yeah, normally it's at the beginning of June. Normally we open up uh, all the Puerto Rican parades in the region. Uh, normally we kind of start and then New York comes uh, right after us and then Bridgeport, Fairfield, uh, New Haven. Uh, but this year we're actually on the other end. We are closing yeah. the Puerto Rican parade, you know, uh, yeah. set for this area. And it's warmer. All right, looks like we are seeing X Dance move through now. Dance Studio, an indoor birthday center in Hartford. There we go. We have uh, young ladies in their 
dance costumes. And they're gonna stop and dance. Watch. Salsa is one of those dances that just kind of, you know, everyone, uh, there's a little bit of salsa in there and they're just having a lot of fun. And in many ways, it's sort of the unofficial dance of Hartford because they have those salsa festivals on Pratt Street. Uh, they really have been attracting a lot of people. So Dancing to Selena, too. Yeah. Selena. This is great. And what an exciting day for these kids, too, these young dancers, to be out here. Moving on, X Dance. That was great. They did a great job. <laughs> After this, we're going to be seeing the Borken Festival of Norwich. It's a celebration of Puerto Rican culture and heritage in Arro City. It was held on June 11th of this year. But they also attend other Puerto Rican festivals and parades across the state. And if you're just tuning in, as Laura and I reported uh, at the beginning of the broadcast, this is the biggest Puerto Rican parade, we are told, in all of Connecticut. So by the organizers here. And boy, they are really showing their pride today. First time in, since 2019 that we're having this parade um, after a COVID leave. And boy, they are bringing it big. Taking a look at the big Puerto Rican parade. Look at the size of that flag. Flag here. Hipstop Clothing, which represents Puerto Rican entrepreneurship in the inner city. It's located on Park Street in Hartford. Yes, yes. So uh, what he's doing now, let me just tell you that he's exciting because he's actually growing. He's expanding his business. Uh, Hipstop Clothing, uh, uh, they, they are amazing. They have everything you could, you need. They have it there. Uh, I know Iron Brugueras. He's the owner of Hipstop Clothing. Yeah, you can see him dancing uh, with the red cap. Uh, great people. Park Street really is an amazing couple of blocks there's some interesting stores there and there's a there's a new development now at park and main so more people are moving there some new apartments are going in and uh el mercado is a great place to stop by grab a little bite to eat and some little shops in there Hip Stop, bringing the fun music with their float to today. Absolutely. <laughs> They're having a great time up there. It's so nice to see. In fact, when you go into the store, that's actually what you get. You get this kind of excitement. Yeah. It's exciting to shop there. And if you are just joining us, this is a live coverage of the Puerto Rican Parade walking down Main Street here. We're toward the end. There is a big festival happening at um, Bushnell Park as well. That's where everyone's wrapping up there. Hip stop moving through. Charter Hoke Health Center is coming up next, taking a look at their uh, their float that they've put together, promoting healthier communities by providing quality, safe, patient-centered health care services in medically underserved areas, regardless of ability to pay. They've been doing this since 1978, continuously providing community-based primary health care to people really all across Metro Hartford. That's incredible. Nice to have them here today. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. Certainly is. And it's been fun to see how the floats are all different. They've been decorated, you know, in their own own way, and uh, they've all been so much fun to see. And a lot of work goes into these, making these floats. Obviously, you need a garage that's big enough to, to put them together. Sure. And uh, a lot of artwork goes into a lot of thought, a lot of planning. And, uh, and then it, you have to get the, you rent the flatbed to put it on, and it's so, it, it's, it's, I, I've been part of a float before, and it is, it, it is a lot to do, so. 
Dennis was on a float when he arrived to our stage. <laughs> <laughs> My own float. I said, Dennis, come on. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, too? Floats are kind of, you know, it, it's, uh, you've been in a parade before, Laura, when you're up on those sure. floats. It, sometimes it's easy to be on one, but when they stop suddenly, you can kind of fall. Yeah, so, it's, it's, yeah. so you do have to kind of, yeah. you know, keep your wits about you and look around all the time. It's so, a good time. Um, so up here so next, we, we just uh, the Central Connecticut State University Latin American Latino and Car Caribbean Center is all was also here. Uh, they support and develop promote programs at the university. And we're looking at the Roberto Clemente dancers now too. Yeah. Looks like they've stopped to uh, put on a show. Let's let's watch. such great work particularly during the pandemic yeah we need to shout out our healthcare workers for yeah sure. i mean they really have been working hard they help 50,000 people across our state every single year now uh Haci hacienda nueva generacion it's a small group of friends with horses who have different breeds of horses like paso fino and standard breads also a big tradition in puerto rico as well Charities behind them there. Nonprofits serving Hartford, Litchfield, New Haven County since 1920, offering everything from senior assistance to adoption services and parenting education. Also with a decorative float and lots of people on board dancing and having fun. They uh, support housing case management, migration and refugee services, as well as disaster relief. And uh, they, their Hispanic roots allow them to help the community feel part of the center and also maintain the traditions of their Latin countries as well. A lot of healthcare workers and community charities involved here today, which is really, uh, you know, the theme here. We're very blessed in Connecticut of so many charity organizations, yeah. and particularly the city of Hartford and New Haven, where uh, community organizations like Catholic Charities do so much work. Yeah, just just this past Monday. Uh, we had them uh, together with us uh, distributing 7,000 pounds of Goya products. Wow. Uh, so great organization. Uh, we partnered together with Goya, and, and we were able to distribute a lot of pro, a lot of food. And what a moment that was. That was quite an event there. And we also have Eye Care Health Network here that we're seeing comprised of the Parkville Care Center, Chelsea Place Care Center, and Trinity Hill Care Center. Yeah, as you mentioned, Goya, one of the sponsors, uh, doing such great things, helping others. 5,000 pounds of food delivered right before this. Um, it was amazing. We spent two nights, you know, putting the food in bags, and, and it was just an amazing feeling. Oh, it feels yeah. so good. I care. Moving through. This is America's Food Basket. It's located in New Britain. It's a cooperative of independent grocers across New England and in addition, New York, Pennsylvania, and Florida. And uh, they really work to be like the neighborhood go-to market. They offer a diverse range of foods. They focus on serving the communities they're in. They are also located in New London.
A lot of Jeeps today, Laura. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Jeeps. They're pretty cool, and they're all through. decked out, decorated, and things like that. So. No shortage of great music and fun. So the music you hear behind America's Food Basket, this is Bomba Radio, 97.5. They are out of Bridgeport, but they, they go statewide. They play Spanish, Latin, and pop music. I want to add that many of the jeeps that, that we are seeing today, they are part of the Oh Yeah crew. Uh, we're going to see some of them at the end of the parade as well. Okay. Uh, but they were basically all in. We asked, hey, we need Jeeps. They said, we got you. We got you. Uh, so they, they, brought, they brought more than 20 Jeeps uh, wow. that they brought uh, just to help us out today. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Jeeps here today. Dennis mentioned, and now we're seeing it there, Bomba Radio, 97.5. Puerto Rican flag in front there. They must have a secondary station because uh, one of the people is holding up a sign that says 104.5. Um, but we are seeing 97.5, so I think right. there, I think there are two stations. Probably in different. Oh yeah, see in the side of the truck it says there's a bunch. So various locations. So 97.1, 98.5, 99.5, and 104.5. BombaRadio.com. And they are having a good time today, bringing some music. It's interesting, too, if I could just point out, you know, the, the, the souvenir salesmen um, who are working around with those carts and yeah. they're going all over, uh, now selling marijuana flags, because that's legal now in Connecticut. Right. It's interesting. It's something you didn't see a couple of years ago. Right. Coming up on Magic Soul Drumline here, providing music art to the youth in the Greater Hartford area in order to help them grasp and understand not just why we need music programs in our city and community, but also the realization of how music has such an impact and influence on all of our lives, no matter where we come from or what we do. Education, they say, is a top priority at Magic Soul. Firm believers of the no child left behind, and they live by that motto. So really doing a lot of good. Yeah, they certainly are, absolutely. I'll tell you, yesterday, uh, six in the, seven in the morning, I got to the office and they were practicing yesterday next to us, and it was just amazing. A lot of job recruiting here today, and this we see right here, this is the Job Corps. Yeah, the Job Corps, Hartford and Job Corps here, federally funded program that helps lower income youth ages 16 to 24 finish their education, learn a trade, become employed in good paying position, mission to give the youth of the Hartford area an opportunity to better their future. Okay. Offering housing, meals, transportation, high school degree programs, college programs, Trade educations, rec groups, child care, internships, and uh, job placement for free. And now we're hearing Viva Radio, a lot of radio stations here. Absolutely. This was Connecticut's first Hispanic radio station. And it's been taking part in the Puerto Rican Parade for over 15 years. They love to entertain, engage, and showcase Hispanic culture, music, and issues. And we, of course, have a special place in, uh, they have a special place in the hearts of many people here because of their rich heritage and their commitment to the community. And if you are just joining us live in Hartford, Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Parade, exciting to be bringing it to you here on News 8. It's an absolutely beautiful day for it. I'm Dennis House alongside Laura Hutchinson. And Amilcar Hernandez with the parade committee is with us here today. And also uh, out in the field, we have Ashley Baylor, Sarah Cody, who are covering various angles of the parade. And of course, the rest of the News 8 team was also marching as well. Uh, Sam Cantor, Ken Pierce, Keith Kuntz, Brian John Munn, Pearson, Mike Mascadrelli, Tina Dettel, Rich Capola. Rich Capola, really yeah. a nice turnout yeah. today. Um, just to 
show our commitment to the city of Hartford and to the Puerto Rican community across the great state of Connecticut. Oh yeah, and it's not just the parade. There's a festival down at the Bushnell Park too, where there's you know job opportunities, food, more music. Um, that's really the meeting ground after the parade, and um, you know even a vaccination clinic. The health department yeah. setting up. I mean, really trying to get some outreach here today. Job recruiting. There's so much going on here today to help the community, and so many of these organizations who are marching today. And as we take a look back at the parade route here, West Indian Independence Celebration is what you're looking at, responsible for the planning and presentation of the West Indian Independence Celebration, which is a one-day festival held annually in here in Hartford. The festival yeah. includes a street parade, music festival, showcasing and promoting West Indian culture, food, music, and people. Also serves to connect natives and also future generations of West Indians born in the U.S. with their heritage. Absolutely. It's the confetti on the street <laughs> from all the floats <laughs> going by. It's a fairly long parade. It uh, kicked off, I'd say, about 11.15 or yep. so, Laura. And, uh, you know, we're approaching, uh, so it's... Yep, T 20 after 12 now. And we still have uh, several... And several you know, entrants to go. One thing I really like is they've been taking their time stopping um, because, again, it's the first time we've had this since 2019 Yes. Um, because of COVID, and so they're really stopping to enjoy it. They're and enjoying it, the moment, showing showing the city what, they, what they've what they got. And it's nice to see the parades coming back. Of course, there was uh, the city of Hartford had their St. Patrick's Day parade in March. That was really the first one they had since COVID. Sure. And it worked out all right, so they said, let's have, let, let's have some more. Wow, can we see these costumes here with the oh, West Indian that. Independence Celebration here? Oh, wow. These are so festive. That is cool. It, it is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, we were there with them uh, a couple of weeks ago. They had their festival and the parade a couple yep. of weeks ago, so we were there with our queens. Uh, we had we had an amazing time. This is amazing. So many countries involved in this, oh, yeah. including Jamaica, Cape Verde, Haiti. Putting on a show here. I think right after them, I think we're seeing the Waterbury um, group as well. Yeah, a whole, whole group of Jeeps here, too. I'll tell you later about that. But, it's, it's yeah, it's interesting how this all goes through. And um, there's so many people turning out and marching. The whole contingency of Jeeps here. And uh, I know the Waterbury Puerto Rican uh, Festival represented. Puerto Rican Parade of Fairfield County represented as well. And these are some of the Jeeps that Almalcar was talking about. 20. Oh, yeah. I, I've counted more than 20, but oh, yeah. it's at least, there's so many here. The Oya oh, yeah, Jeep crew forming, not as a club, but individuals go out and bring in their Jeeps to bring smiles to kids yeah. and families. these Jeeps go by. This is uh, wrapping up the parade for us today. And Amakar, what did you think? Oh, this is amazing. I mean, I have the best view here, let me tell you. you I, did. I, all I see is just flags everywhere. Uh, this is amazing. I can't wait now for our festival to kick off in, in, in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely invite everybody to head to the Bushnell Park. Uh, we're going to have a great festival from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, all the hard work that went into this, um, you know, really seeing it come to fruition might, must be a special moment for you. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I want to invite everybody just to go to our website, hardfordprparade.com, just to see some of the other events that we have throughout the year so you can support us, so you can become a volunteer. So shout out to all of our volunteers that made this possible. Uh, hardfordprparade.com, that's our website for the Puerto Rican Parade. And we can't thank you enough for joining us today, helping us, uh, to, you know, really giving us new perspective of the parade as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, it's amazing. And we also want to give a big shout out to the WTNH crew who helped put this on today. So many of 
our behind the scenes people working all over the city yep. and here to bring this event to you. That and was really another nice. shout out to um, Hartford Police as well for they keeping really everyone safe today, yep. uh, keeping the roads closed and uh, uh, just providing security throughout the route. Everyone's just having a good time, feeling safe, and it's a great day. You have been watching the Greater Hartford Puerto Rican Day Parade here on News 8 and WTNH.com. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Laura Hutchinson alongside Dennis Howes, Amakar Hernandez. Thank you so much again, and thanks to you at home for joining us. Complete coverage tonight at 6, 10, and 11 at WTNH and our sister station, WCTX. Good night. Good afternoon.